What's the point of shading? Some drawings don't even have a shading and it looks good. Okay, but do you doubt that this person knows how light works though? Like, if this person really, really wanted to, I bet that they could very easily draw a picture that looks amazing with great lighting. Because understanding lighting and shading is one of the key aspects of understanding drawing. From shading, you can surmise an object's size, transparency, texture, material, movement, position, even its surroundings. That's right, you can know what's happening around an object just by drawing the object itself well enough. Isn't that crazy? It's why there's that stereotype of like art schools always forcing you to draw fruits and bowls and fruits inside bowls. They're trying to get you to understand that different things react to light differently. They're training your power of observation. It, it's not just light, it's, it's like colors and like other stuff like that, but anyways. I'm going to show you a really simple way to think about shading, and then a really simple but extremely effective technique for lighting. Both of these will instantly improve your technique if you haven't already been using them. Now, I'll break down some basic shading fundamentals. There are two ways to generate shadows directly casting a shadow and being far from light. Directly casting a shadow is when an opaque object is literally blocking light. Opaque means it doesn't let light pass through it, so glass is not opaque, but a basketball is. Most of the time, there's only one light source, so let's keep it that way here. If we have, like, an umbrella here, then the light is only gonna hit up to here, right? Or something like that. We can extend this to other things. The character's hair is going to block some of the light, so we add what we call a hard shadow. In digital art tool terms, you can think of this as shading with, like, a, a pen or brush tool. If there's a hard shadow, then there's gotta be a soft shadow, right? So, you can be dark by being covered from the light by something, but you can also be dark from being far from light. So we have a light source coming from here, and so it should stand to reason that this side of the object should be the brightest. But it's not like something's really blocking the light from reaching here necessarily, it's just far. So, we apply a soft shadow. In digital art tool terms, this would be your airbrush or gradient. I, I don't really like recommending using gradients unless you really know what you're doing though, so, so I'll say airbrush. Now, let's combine these ideas. Say we have a person's face, the light is coming from here. Their nose, jaw, and hair will be blocking light coming from here, casting a hard shadow. On the other hand, the far side of their face will simply just be too far away from the light, requiring us to put a soft shadow. You can mix soft and hard shadows as it is appropriate to show different textures, depth, and dynamics in your drawings. As a side note, I don't super recommend putting too much like shadows on faces when you're drawing faces unless you're like really, really committing to putting a lot of detail in it because it can sometimes look a little too jarring. Alright, so we, we learned about shading and stuff, that's cool, but we need to talk about light too. This is one of the best, simplest lighting cheats ever. It's a really easy way to improve your drawing by a million billion percent and make your objects look interesting and not flat. Trust me, I use this all the time. Let me start one step back. Essentially, everything is going to be shaded as some sort of sphere, cube, cylinder, or some combination or mutation of these. You shade spheres like this. You have your light source, which you should decide pre, and obviously wherever the light is the farthest away from is the darkest part. That, that was a terrible sentence, but, but you get what I mean. Now here comes the best part, reflected light. One of the primary purposes of shading, other than the stuff I mentioned earlier, is that it communicates depth. Reflected light adds another dimension of depth to any drawing. You can observe this for yourself if you like at home. Shine a flashlight at an object and you'll see that the light that reflects off whatever is on the other side of the object will illuminate the far part of it just a little bit. Everything reflects light. One way to easily remember this is that your brightest part will not be too far from your darkest part. Then the brightest part kind of gradients off into like a little darker and the darkest part gradients off a little bit into the lighter. Of course, depending on your lighting situation. Cubes are a similar deal, but just on three visible planes. Light source, brightest part, gets darker as you get farther away from the light. Darkest part is most obscured because it's not receiving any reflected light, or barely any. Then, as you go farther, you get more reflected light. Cylinders are peculiar, but if you try to apply a similar principle, you should get it. I want you to pause the video and try to guess where the darkest and brightest parts of the cylinder will be if we assume the light source is here. Did you guess this? I don't know, maybe you did. No shame if you didn't, this stuff is confusing. Anyway, not every material or object will be shaded as dramatically as this, and sometimes drawing like this is not conducive to your medium or style. This applies pretty much to drawings with a certain level of detail. You'll see a lot of shows don't do this, because it's too many things to think about at once for not enough additional benefit. Adding reflected light will give your drawings a dimension of depth and complicatedness that isn't messy, but rather very pleasing and natural. Just because it is a concept from realism doesn't mean that it clashes with more stylized designs either. Applying it can really make any drawing pop. One simple way that I like to do this is to turn on a soft or hard light layer, go to a different color than some of the colors that I've been using, and just use an airbrush to kind of do like a cursory sweep on the darkest parts of the drawing, like so. 
I, I like I like the reflected light better. It makes it makes things look less flat, and it communicates, you know, the kind of there's a world outside of this character, and it makes it look more like whole. I guess there, there's a lot of benefits to this, but I, I recommend giving this a try. It's not going to come naturally right away for everyone, but I encourage you to try out different techniques and different colors too. Show me how it goes on our Discord server, the link to which is in the description. We have art discussions, art advice, art contests, and a channel to browse other users' works too. I can't wait to see your guys' art around the internet.